Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We welcome you all to a new episode, the Ibn Allah, a new series where we'll be discussing some of the stories mentioned in the Quran. I'm waiting for Sheikh Ibrahim. Inshallah, we hope to look at uh, the story mentioned in a juz. After that, we will mention some of the benefits, bi Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Shaykhna? Alhamdulillah, all well. How are you? I hope you are well. Alhamdulillah, I'm well, and uh, we hope the same for all of the viewers. Yes, inshallah. Basically, as you mentioned, we wanted to speak about, we wanted to take the juz, the ajza of the Quran, the 30 portions or the 30 juz, and look at the stories in each juz every day. So by the end of Ramadan, we would have covered the stories mentioned in the Quran, bi'ithnillah. Bi'ithnillah ta'ala. I think it's a great idea. Bismillah. So we begin, when we look in the first juz of the Quran, we find Allah Jalla wa ala, Oh, there is Surah Al-Fatiha. After that, Surah Al-Baqarah begins. In Surah Al-Baqarah, the very first story we come across is the story of the creation, the story of how Allah Jalla wa Ala created Adam alayhi salam. A brief overview of the story, Allah Jalla wa Ala wanted to create something. So he created the human being, he created Adam alayhi salam, and the angels, they asked him the reason behind creating this human being, because they mentioned that why does Allah Jalla wa ala, or they asked, they wanted to get more knowledge. Why did Allah Jalla wa ala create a human being who will cause mischief and they will be killing on earth? So Allah Jalla wa ala said, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know why I have created these human beings. What stood out for you in this story? I find that uh, in the story, the most important, the most interesting thing to me is that the angels actually question the reason of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, why was he creating human beings? And we find that the, prof- the answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is profound. He says, Qala inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know that which you do not know. So, there are certain things that are beyond our capacity of understanding. That which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is enough for us. So it's not for us as human beings or as angels, as creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go about questioning, why are you placing on earth a uh, a being that will spill a lot of blood and cause corruption? Uh, This was the question that they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Certain things are beyond the capacity of our understanding. The wisdom, the total and entire wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind creation uh, is not necessarily understood by myself and uh, yourself because that is infinite, which is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we as human beings are finite, we will end, and there is a limit to everything that we have. Uh, the same goes, for example, for our muscular limit. If we were to say, uh, can I lift five kgs? We'd say yes. Can I lift 20 kgs? Yes. Some people may be 50, but you go to 300, 400 and a human being begins to become weak and limited. So we know that there's a limit for everything. The same way, uh, your mind cannot understand certain things. And these things should not be questioned about the creator as a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the question arises, Believe that he knows better than you know and leave it to him. Most definitely, you are so correct. You know, adding on your point, you mentioned that they, Allah Jalla wa ala said he knows that which they did not know, the angels, and he knows that which we all do not know. Adding to your point, some of the scholars mentioned that when somebody does something and you don't understand, you may ask them the wisdom behind their action. So look at the angels. Allah Jalla wa ala after creating something or he wanted to create the human being, Adam alayhi salam, the angels, they asked him his wisdom behind it. Basically, they didn't want to go against his command. No, they basically were saying, oh, Allah, teach us the reason for this. And this teaches us that sometimes when we are in a higher position and we do something and somebody lower questions us, not a question where it's a tahqiq or interrogation. No, a question, they just want to know what's going on. If Allah jalla wa'ala, 
could explain the reason to the angels after that he mentions the reasons what about us yes yes uh, absolutely uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about al fir'aun the family of fir'aun and uh, or the people of fir'aun you know, and he says just sorry go on before that uh, the the point that stood out to me in the story of adam okay. alayhi salam after he you know committed the sin they ate from the tree and allah jalla wa ala expelled them from jannah basically here adam alayhi salam was told not to go close to the tree not to eat from the fruit he made a mistake he did all this all this was his mistake after that allah jalla wa ala orders him to make tawbah allah teaches him the words to ask forgiveness and then allah says and he forgave him and this teaches us when you make a mistake adam alayhi salam was warned he was told not to come close when you make a mistake turn back to allah jalla wa ala he still forgives use the dua that adam alayhi salam used yes yes subhanallah what's amazing there is that he made the mistake and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him how to go back and return to him so that in itself is profound that allah wants to uh, forgive you allah yuridu an yatuba alaykum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to forgive you. And in another ayah, he actually says, ما يفعل الله بعذابكم? What will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Uh, what will he gain from punishing you? إن شكرتم وآمنتم If you are grateful and you believe. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gains nothing from punishing us. Uh, unfortunately, many of us feel uh, sometimes that because of circumstance in our lives, we begin to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or uh, we actually... Uh, believe that he wants to punish us uh, punish us but this is not true in everything sometimes even in difficulty there is uh, a rahma and a mercy for a human being so most definitely as you mentioned maybe you could enlighten us on the second story we want to touch on mentioned in the first juz so we we all know the story of fir'aun and uh, musa alayhi salatu wassalam and how fir'aun was a tyrant we find in the first juz allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how he saved the people of fir'aun from uh, fir'aun himself so it is said that he actually saw a dream fir'aun saw a dream in which a fire was emerging from bait al-maqdis in jerusalem and he saw that this fire would engulf them and destroy them except for banu israel so he felt that i need to now uh do something about this perhaps the interpretation of this means that a king will rise from amongst them take over my kingdom etc so he de- decided to start killing off the men folk from those who were born so the male children were killed off so what do you find is profound in the story and how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually saved them etc as you mentioned the story of musa alayhi salam is mentioned in many different parts of the quran in fact surah al baqarah is named surah al baqarah because it speaks about the cow or the animal the cow that banu israel were ordered to slaughter so we find when looking in this juz allah jalla wa ala speaks about musa alayhi salam and his encounter with fir'aun he then mentions after they had escaped from fir'aun what happened he then mentions the story of the cow for me what stood out is after they had escaped fir'aun they were free basically the pharaoh had been drowned and they had made it to the other side safely allah jalla wa ala had blessed them with different foods alman wa salwa from jannah a food from jannah they then mentioned after a while they said wa id qultum ya musa lan nasbira ala ta'amin wahid we will not be able to bear patience when it comes to this one food imagine they were getting something from heaven something heavenly and what stood out for me is this teaches us even when it comes to your ni'mah when it comes to your bounty you have to be patient in other verses of the quran allah jalla wa ala says inna fi dhalika la ayatin li kulli sabbarin shakur when mentioning ni'am he says these are signs for those who are patient and they are grateful yes sometimes you're going through a difficult situation we say make sabr but sometimes you have everything going your way also learn how to be grateful and learn how to be patient don't ask for more and more and more yes absolutely you know when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved fir'aun uh, i mean he saved banu israel from fir'aun 
then we find that he mentions yasumunakum su'al adhab yudhabbihuna abna'akum wa yastahyuna nisa'akum wa fi dhalikum bala'un min rabbikum azim that he was slaughtering the children and he was leaving the women folk alive because he felt that the threat would come from the male children and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in that there is a serious test for you yet we find that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them banu israel still did some bad things and they began to worship a calf that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told them uh, yet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had saved them so this for me actually stands out because sometimes you are in difficulty you are in distress you're in hardship uh, perhaps you don't have enough money to to meet your rental for that month allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you from a means you cannot imagine imagine for them the entire sea was split and then they still disbelieved in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshiping a calf they knew whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was they had a messenger in their midst yet they still disbelieved in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were ungrateful to him so when allah's given you something in your life then be grateful to him and remember to thank him uh, even in is there is a test for you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see whether you will be grateful or ungrateful yes as you mentioned the life of a believer is between you know there's your tests and you are patient and allah jalla wa ala also gives you things and he wants to see if you are grateful and again patient at the same time to be grateful you have to be patient with what you have moving on to the third story we find allah jalla wa ala speaks about sulaiman alayhi salam and the story of magic how magic began he also mentions how sulaiman alayhi salam was not involved in any magic he was not a magician he did not he did not teach the people magic what uh, what stood out for you when it comes to the story allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says later on in that ayah that fayata'allamuna minhu ma ma yufarriquna bihi bayna almar'i wa zawjihi and they would learn from depending on your interpretation of the verses but they would learn from the angels that which would separate between a man and his wife right basically to repeat what sheikh ibrahim said for those who missed it uh, or for those who couldn't hear we were speaking about the story of sulaiman alayhi salam and the story of magic allah jalla wa ala then says speaking about those who carry out magic fa ta'allamuna minhuma ma yufarriquna bihi bayna almar'i wa zawjihi wa ma hum bidarrina bihi min ahadin illa bi idhnillah we find that these people who carry out such actions they cannot harm anybody unless it is by the decree of allah jalla wa ala sometimes we feel or we have you know doubts that this one did this to me this one did this to me this one did magic on me and that may not be the case and even if somebody is trying to harm you remember no harm will reach you unless allah jalla wa ala has decreed for that to reach you at the same time if somebody is trying to harm you allah jalla wa ala is in charge of everything he is in control ask him to protect you every day you should read your muawwidat your uh, surah al ikhlas falaq an nas at the time stipulated by the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as ayat al kursi and other adhkar to protect you another point we could add on is those who do these uh, you know bad actions or bad deeds remember you are selling the akhirah for something in this world which is short lived and those who've done such things you find that their life turns upside down it is a life of sadness uneasiness and difficulty we ask allah jalla wa ala to protect us moving on to the fourth story sheikh allah jalla wa ala speaks about ibrahim alayhi salam allah jalla wa ala says that he tested ibrahim alayhi salam wa id ibtala ibrahim rabbuhu bi kalimatin fa atamahun We're basically waiting for Sheikh Ibrahim to join again. Allah Jalla wa Ala, he tested Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam went through many tests. For me, what stood out was Ibrahim alayhi salam was a visionary. He had vision and his vision was very, very far in the future. Allah Jalla wa Ala says that after he completed the test, قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا Allah Jalla wa Ala tells Ibrahim alayhi salam I will most definitely make you 
from those who are the a'imma, those who are the leaders, especially when it comes to the deen, especially when it comes to the religion. What did Ibrahim alayhi salam say straight after that? Did he, yes, he thanked Allah, but was he happy for himself or he had a further vision? He said, Qala wa min Oh Allah, what about my children? What about all the, my generation, my progeny that will come after? Qala la yanalu Allah Jalla wa Ala says, basically, that all those who are oppressors will not attain imama, will not be leaders, especially when it comes to the deen. The point I want to mention is look at how Ibrahim alayhi salam had this vision. Sometimes you have a vision for five years, 10 years. You have a vision for a project that should last after your lifetime, well beyond generations to come. The very first seed to plant is that of ikhlas, being sincere. Sheikh, what stood out for you in the story? Alhamdulillah, I'm back. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُوا إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلُ That whilst Ibrahim was building the Kaaba, he was, you know, he was uh, building the foundation and his son was with him, he made a dua. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Oh, our Rabb, accept from us indeed you hear everything and you are the seer of everything. In this dua, there's a profound piece of advice that we can learn and benefit from. So basically, even though he was doing something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to do, he was behaving in the right manner. He still asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from him. So when we do some ibadah, some worship, think about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you at that moment. Picture in your mind that he is all hearing, all seeing. He sees the condition of your heart. He knows what you are thinking and what is going through your, your emotions at the time. So in this manner, you actually gain much more reward and at the same time, the acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you're so right. It's all about acceptance. It's not how uh, major or how big your deed is or how much you've done. At the end of the day, if Allah Jalla wa Ala accepts from you, that's all that matters. Somebody may do so much. And sometimes we feel as human beings, we've done so much and these are my good deeds and Allah has accepted. We don't even know. Look at the best person of his time, Khalil, the Khalil of Allah Jalla wa Ala. He is there busy asking Allah after making the Kaaba, after cleaning the Kaaba, making for those Ta'ifina wal Aakifina or Rukka is Sujood. He is then making a dua, he's building the Kaaba and saying, oh Allah, accept from us. Oh Allah, accept from us. What about when it comes to our good deeds? Yes, and that acceptance, you know, continued for so long that we find today uh, people visit the Kaaba in millions, millions and millions of people. How many of them make sure that their niyyah and their intention is pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before they get there? Uh, because they know that right now, you know, this is my chance. And for a lot of them, it's the only time they're ever going to go to the Kaaba. So they make sure that they are really pure in their intention. All of that reward goes to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He probably never imagined, I can't say for sure, but he probably never imagined how many, by now billions of people uh, would have visited the Kaaba. So this is something profound. Sincerity can take you beyond your imagination. You know, as you mentioned, being sincere and also look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. At the time, he was one person, him and his son. There was no following, no group of people, yet he still carried on. Sometimes when you have your vision, you, especially when it's something for Allah Jalla wa Ala, don't worry about those who are following you, even if you don't have a following. That is why in the hadith, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was shown the umam, the previous nations and their anbiya, he mentions that he, was, he saw a group of people Sawadun uh, a group of people, basically when you see people from far, it's like a black covering. And they had uh, their leader who was Musa alayhi salam. He also says they were anbiya who only had a small following and some of them were alone. So you carry on with what you need to do with your message. Be sincere, whether you have a follower or you have a hundred followers, it doesn't matter. Allah Jalla wa Ala is the one who will reward you, and there were Anbiya before you, messengers who didn't have any followers. 
Yes, yes. Imagine uh, yourself today on Facebook sp spreading a message that's good and you're trying to get some uh, goodness out there and nobody's following you, nobody's liking your posts, nobody's uh, sharing that which you've shared and you think that you begin to dwindle, right? Hey, uh, is this worth it? Am I doing something uh, good here? Should I start sharing that which people will follow? Remind yourself at that moment that you didn't do it for the people. You did it for Allah. And at that juncture, when you remind yourself, you find peace, not only then, but then later on as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you so much goodness in your life. Continue. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will most definitely uh, reward you. It's not for the people. It's for Allah. So when you do that and you make yourself uh, sincere, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will most definitely open the doors. May Allah jalla wa ala open all our doors and grant us sincerity and good deeds that carry on well after we pass away. Sheikh, is there anything else you'd like to add on? Uh, I think lastly, I'd like to also draw the attention one, one last time to the fact that Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was basically him and his son. They were building the Kaaba. They were alone. They had no following, no people clapping hands, they standing there saying, hey, you've done a great job. Congratulations. You don't need this in your life. You know, uh, people wait for the approval of others to do something. As long as you're not doing something haram and wrong, do it with the right intention. And look at how Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam got the reward that he did. And he continues to get the reward that he is getting today from the people that are going for Hajj and Umrah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can sometimes uh, prevent you from receiving followers and congratulations in this world as a rahmah and a mercy for you because he wants to give you much more after you've passed on. So don't focus on that and do what you've got to do. You are so right. I think today we, just to recap, we touched on the story of creation, creation of Adam alayhi salam. We spoke about Musa alayhi salam. We spoke about Sulaiman alayhi salam and the story of magic. We then touched a little bit on the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, all mentioned in the first juz. For those who want to read or who want to, you know, follow the stories, maybe you could go through the juz. We'll try and put it out before we come on. Maybe you could share some of the benefits which you derive from these stories or any other, you know, any other verse from the Qur'an, and we also would love to benefit from those who are following. Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh. And alhamdulillah, we come to an end uh, of the first session. It's been lovely being with you. Unfortunately, again, my internet here being in Zimbabwe is uh, terrible. But khair, alhamdulillah. Ameen wa iyyakum. We ask Allah Jalla wa ala to grant us goodness and acceptance. And inshallah, tomorrow, same time, we will be speaking about some of the stories in the second juz. Jazakumullahu khayran, Shaykh. May Allah Jalla wa Ala reward you and all those who followed and all those who listen afterwards. Ameen, Ameen. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.